guys and welcome back so in this video we're going to speak about room database together with jepa compose so if you don't know what is room database and jepa compose so this tutorial is going to be for you so without any further delay let's get started okay so what is room database actually so the root persistent library provide an abstraction layer over sqlite to allow fluent database access while harnessing the full power of sqlite so we have an abstraction layer that is going to help us to communicate directly with SQLite database. So for this case, we have the advantages which we are going to receive when we use room database. So for example, we have the compile time verification of SQL queries. So we don't have to wait until we launch our application, then we are going to have errors, which we do not understand. For example, our application is crashing at runtime. So for this case, we have the advantage of compile time verification of these queries and we can easily fix them. And also we have the convenience annotations that minimizes repetitive and error prone boilerplate codes. So for example, if we want to write a code to insert a data, so we don't have to write all of these manually, we can easily relay on these annotations in order to insert this data. So we're going to see later when we actually write the code. Also, we have the streamlined database migration paths. So, for example, if we change our database, for example, we change our tables, we insert uh, other type of fields inside our tables, then we can easily migrate from one version of database to another versions by using room database migration paths. And we can see this later inside our tutorials. Okay, now let's look at the architecture of the application. So this is just the recommended architecture when we want to use room database inside your application. So when you want to write robust code, you have to follow this architecture. So for this case here, we have a UI controller and also we have a view model repository and then we have a room database. So all of these parts are interconnected in one way or another and then we can easily use them in order to make our application functioning. So we have here UI controller. So the UI controller is responsible to display the data. So this is a place where we can easily communicate with it. For example, we can interact with it. And this is going to be, for example, an activity, a fragment or a screen in case of Jepa Compose. And also we have a view model. So the view model holds all the data needed for the UI and then it's responsible to prepare the data. For example, if you want to display a list, then this view model is going to be responsible in preparing this the data. And then it's going to forward this data to the UI controller by using a live data. So a live data is responsible in observing the changes which are going to be happening, for example, inside a room database. So if we insert a data, then this live data is going to observe these changes and then tell the UI, hey, the, chat, the, the, the data has changed. So you have to change your UI. For this case, we have the live data. And also we have a repository. So a repository is just a single source of truth for all the app data. So the view model is only going to communicate to the repository and it doesn't understand where the data is arising from. So this is just the responsibility of the repository in order to figure out where the data is coming from. So for example, here we don't have a network connection. For example, if we had a data source that is arising from a network, then we can easily fetch this data from the network. But we have to relay only through the repository to do this work. And for now here we have only a room database, then the repository is going to directly fetch the data in a room database. And for this case, inside a room database here, we have several things. For example, we have here a DAO, Entity, and SQLite. So all of these are just objects which we can easily create using Kotlin, and we can easily communicate with our SQLite database. So we're going to see how we can easily use this in a moment. Okay, so we have here our first class, which is just going to be an entity. And as we have said, an entity is going to act as a table inside our database. So for example, when we want to create a, data, a table that is going to contain users, so we can easily create this by using the annotation entity and create a data class that is going to be called user. And here we have several things. For example, we have the first property, which is going to be the user ID. And we have marked this to be the primary key so that it can be unique. And also here we have, for example, the annotation column info that is going to help us to provide a name which is going to be different to the name of this property here. So as you can see here, we have an underscore and here we don't have the underscore because the naming convection of SQLite and uh, Kotlin are different. So for this case, we can easily use the column info in order to change these property names and save them easily inside our database. 
And also we have another thing which is just called the data access object or DAO. And the DAO is responsible in providing us with the methods which we can easily communicate with our database. So for example here, this is just an interface and it is annotated with at DAO. And we have several methods that are going to help us to access this database. For example, here we have the at query annotation. So at query annotation give us the power of writing raw SQL statement in order to uh, access the database. So for example, here we have written a raw SQL statement to get a user from the database. And here we can easily return a list of users and actually use them inside our application. And for example, here we have other convenient annotation methods like at insert here which is going to help us to insert the users so we don't even have to write the raw sql statement in order to get the user data so for this case we can just write at insert and room will actually do the hard work and also we have another one which is just at delete and then we can just pass in the data which we want to delete and for this case the room is going to delete the data and even if you want to write a complex query, you can easily use this at query and write, for example, this query here, which is going to find a user by name. And for this case, we can easily get our data. So this is just called the data access object. And we're going to see in more detail when we actually write our code. And also we have the database class. So as we have said that the database class is responsible in giving us the access to the database. As you can see here, we have the, this is actually an abstract class. And actually it's going to give us the access to this DAO. And DAO actually give us the access to the methods which we can easily interact with our database. And as you can see here, we have annotated this with our database. And here basically we can provide the list of all of our tables which we have. So for our case, we had only a single table. For example, here a user class, and that is what we are going to be using here. And also this version here is going to communicate to the version number of our database. So for example, if we change or we add another database here, another database table, then we can just change this version number here to two, for example. And we're going to see this step by step when we finish our tutorials. So guys, let's leave it here for this video. So if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to provide a like and subscribe for more videos. So see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.